Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. This week, I just thought we would look and play around with some tools that maybe we're not as familiar with, that we should get familiar with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my custom shapes. Remember, these are vector files. I'm going to grab, come down, and go to Butterfly. Now when this comes up, this is artwork. Now you can see in our artwork, in our properties, that the pin width here is 2.0. That's not going to determine anything but how well you see it. It's not going to determine the width of a line, the width of a satin. So it could be the one point, or it could be 0.5. So it really doesn't matter. That is just the line around the artwork. Sometimes we like it more bold, just so we can see and work with it better. Now the other thing we have in this properties box is a fill. Now if we wanted to fill in this space, it's still not going to make any difference as far as what we can do. Now I'm going to undo by coming to my undo and left mouse clicking. We're back to the outline. Now I can click on my run and it creates a run stitch. What can I do? I can change the length of the run. I can change run spacing. I can change it from a run to a double run to a bean. Now let's go back. I'm going to undo. I'm back to the artwork. Let's go ahead and select our artwork and fill it in. Now if I select the run, it doesn't change anything. So whether my artwork is an outline or filled in, it's not going to make a difference as far as creating an outline around it or let's undo. Let's go ahead back and let's go back to our outline. I could take that same outline and I could come down here and say let's make it a standard fill. So you understand that the way the artwork is, whether it's filled in, whether it's just an outline, whether it's an outline of 0.5 millimeters or it's an outline of 2 millimeters, it's not going to change what happens when we convert to stitches. That is always going to remain the same. Now, we have a 3D view. When I have this selected, as you can see, it's a bright pink. That is the selection color. I have chosen and I've shown you in previous videos how to select your highlight color. I pick it, picked Hideous Pink because it's a color that I'm not real fond of and it is bright and it does get your attention when you've selected part of a design. Now I'm going to click off of this and I've got it in 3D view. Now if I take that off we're back to the stitches view. Here's the three-dimensional. Now remember, this is a three-dimensional view, but you're looking at a three-dimensional view on a two-dimensional object here. So it does the best it can, but don't think that this is gospel. You see kind of it looks like maybe there's a fault line right here. There is not. That is just the look of the 3D view. It's not going to stitch out with this little stitch here that looks like it's kind of separating the rest. Now with this selected, I'm going to come up here, excuse me, in 3D view, I'm going to come up here, get my selection and click on it, or I'm really fond of using the sequence view for everything. I can select it from the sequence view. Now I could make this a fill stitch. And that's always interesting. Now I could make it any fill that I like. and I can always see that if I s click off of it. As long as it's selected you don't see it well. So we've got the fancy fill stitch. Now what I think I want to do here is I think I'm going to come down and I want to make it a wave color blend. Well, I think that's an interesting look. It's something different. Now let's look at this wave color blend and let's go through this. Now with this as a gray wave color blend when I clicked on it, my properties box came up with my gradient fill. Now it says I have a color one and I have color blend two. So I can come in here and I can select any color I like 
to blend with this. So I can scroll through all the colors that are in our color palette to see if there's another color I would like. So I think I'm going to grab this yellow right here and I'm going to apply. So you can see the difference. Now let's look at what this means here. Linear increasing and linear decreasing. It means the athletic gold is going to increase as the pink decreases. So you can see how it's increasing and decreasing. So let's switch it. Let's go, this is linear decreasing, and let, let's make this linear increasing, and apply. So now you can see, here we have the linear decreasing coming down to the increasing. You, the pink gets more prominent. So this has been set for you as far as, here is the gradient density. It's at 4.4. Now you could do this at, say, 6. Now if I wanted to make this a lot more open, I could create a design and put the mylar behind it. You know it's very popular making a light fill and putting mylar behind them. This is one way you could do this because you could go ahead and change the density, the density between the stitches. Now you've also got convex and concave. Let's look at that look. Now that is going to come from the middle out, as you can see. It's kept my 6.0 density that I had already set, unless I change that back to 4.4. So you can see it's kind of fun to play with this. Play with your different colors. Now if you didn't want any color blend, of course you would deselect color 2, and you would not have that color blend. You would just have the old athletic gold would be both colors and you could still get a fun different look. Let's go to linear decreasing. Let's go to linear. Let me get on this here. Well, hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I've deselected it. It's not going to matter. I don't know what I'm thinking. I've changed this to linear decreasing. There you go. And I could put it at linear increasing and apply. So you can see the difference there. So again, you could put mylar behind one of these and it would be a very nice look. Now I'm going to go ahead and go with my color blend. Pick something pretty to blend with this. And I'm going to apply. And now we've got the two colors, the apricot and the gold. So again, you can have a lot of fun looking at this, changing your colors. Think of a sunset. It would be so easy to create the colors in a sunset. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to look at playing a little bit and explaining a little bit with our outline, create outlines. So I'm going to come up here and left mouse click on this. Now I've got four ripples, which means it's going to repeat four times, and I'm going to space them 1.5 millimeters apart. Now I want you to notice I am set in millimeters, because when I use these outlines, I have a real hard time in my mind doing the math for little bitty inch, inch increments. So it's easier for me to set in metric when I'm going to use these outlines. So I'm going to say OK, and you can see it has created four outlines and they're 1.5 millimeters apart. Now with those, these are artwork, I want you to see. They are artwork outlines. So there they are. Now with those selected, I'm going to select this artwork, I could turn these into run stitches. I could come in here and I could make it a triple run, with a bean with stitch with three repeats. I could say make it five, seven, nine, or eleven repeats. I'm going to say five repeats, but I'm going to change this stitch length to 3.5 because now it's going to be more top stitch looking. I want a longer stitch there, and I'm going to apply. And see with our fun color blend here, our gradient blend, we've got a blend in here as well with our stitches out here. So again, I'm enjoying playing with this changing the colors, working with this. Now let's undo. 
Let's undo as our friend. Let's go back to undo. Now let's say I want, I'm going to put this on this on a center block in a quilt. I want to do some, have some fun here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. And you know what I don't like here is I don't like the fact that I don't have a full run stitch around here. So what I'm going to do is select this. I'm going to right mouse click copy, right mouse click paste. So now I have two butterflies right on top of each other. Well I'm going to select the second one and say make that a run stitch. I want to have a nice run around the edge. I want to have a clean run. So with that selected, now I'm going to come back up to my create outlines and I'm going to change that to a one and I want it about, oh, I don't know, let's make it about a quarter of an inch away from our butterfly. I've put that at six. I'm going to say OK because that's six millimeters. So now that's about a quarter of an inch away around my butterfly. Now this is artwork. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and come up to one of my favorite tools up here. This is my artwork tool and this is my artwork shapes. Now this is all my fun shapes, my custom shapes. This is your regular just rectangle, circle, triangle, diamond, you get it. These are just some regular shapes. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my rectangle shape and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that around the butterfly. Now there, that's artwork as well. I'm going to come into transform under artwork and I'm going to tell this, I want this to be, let's make it a five by five. And I'm going to apply that. So let's go ahead and fit that to screen so you can see I've got the butterfly in the middle of this block. Well with two pieces of artwork here, I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to click on one, holding down my control key. I am going to click on my second one. So what I'm doing is I've selected both pieces of artwork. Now with them both selected, I'm going to come up to my paper clip. Now what I want to do is combine that area. So let's combine. Now you can't see what I did, but I'm going to show you by filling it in. Apply. Now you see what I did. I actually combined all the area into one piece of artwork. Now it wouldn't have mattered if I hadn't filled it in. It's still going to react the same as if I had. Remember the butterfly shape. I just pushed that so you could see what combining that did. Now with that combined, now what I can do is I can put a stitch around here. Well, the most logical, if this is a quilt block, is I'm going to stipple. Now when my stippling comes in, this comes in with the stitch length at 3, but the density is 2.5. This is pretty much auto stippling. That's pretty close. Now I'm going to select automatically close and I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to make it four millimeters density. I like that better. Now I'm going to do one more thing because I think this doesn't look as finished as it could. So again, I'm going to select that butterfly. I'm going to come into my create outlines and I'm going to leave the settings just the same. So I'm going to put this outline right there and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that run stitch and go ahead, whoops, I had it all selected, undo is my friend. Okay, I'm going to select just that piece of artwork and I'm using my sequence view to do so. Now I'm going to turn that into a run stitch and now I think that has a better finished look with this run defining the outline of the butterfly and then you've got your stipple. Now one other thing we might like to do is if I'm going to, I might want to have an outline right around here. So again I'm going to come up here, grab my rectangle. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to make this. Now I had that stippling at 5.5 uh, 
I could either go into transform or since I'm close, I'm good. Now again, I'm going to turn this in to a run stitch. So now I have a nice finished look. This would be my stitching line if I were adding two blocks together. I could also, if I needed to do this, I could also grab this rectangle, bring it up, come into transform, make it a six inch by six inch, apply, and if I would center that. Let me grab this to fit it to screen so you can see it all. What I would come in here and do now is I would select all items and that would select everything. Oh, excuse me. Before we select it, we need to make this last item not artwork, but we need to turn it into a run stitch as well. There we go. Now we're going to come up in our sequence view. We are going to select all items and we're going to come up to our align icons and I'm going to align horizontal centers. I'm going to align vertical centers. I'm going to do both of those so I know this is nice and straight. So if I wanted to stitch this out in the hoop, I could and I could stitch as many as I want. I have a cutting line and I have a sewing line. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some different tools, looking, playing a little bit with our outlines tools, knowing that what you can do with that. We've, done, we've created a, a small little medallion quilt block. We've played with the artwork and we've played with some of our gradient fill tool. I've had a lot of questions on that, so I hope this answers your question. And I thank you for coming to this month's block of the, I mean, this week's uh, project of the week.